What is the scariest, creepiest, most disturbing thing you have ever encountered? About 20 years ago I was working at a school. A teacher was in my shared office working and she and her recently divorced daughter both worked at the school. Anyway, her ex-son-in-law just came into the school without signing in and came into my office asking his ex-mother-in-law where his ex-wife was. At this time, I had only heard anecdotal vague stuff about him. But the second he opened my office door, I was really scared. He just had this look that told me not to engage with him in any way. He tried to get his ex-wife to go somewhere with him and she refused and he left the school. The mother and her daughter didn't show up to work the next day and they didn't call in either. The principal went to check on them and found them shot dead along with two other people. We just continued to have school that day with kids talking about them being dead all day and it was just horrible. The most dangerous point in an abusive relationship is when the victim leaves. Unfortunately, did he end up going to jail? Yes, he was arrested, charged, found guilty, sentenced to death and was executed. When I was in the third grade an older kid I went to school with kept asking me if I wanted to see some cool stuff that was in his backpack. I ignored the kid at first, but after a few hours at the child care center at school, it was a snow day, I went over with him to his bag, where he pulled out some polaroids of a naked woman. I freaked out, he told me I was just being dumb. That it was just pornography and that it was just something totally normal. I was raised in the Mormon church, and anything pornography related was so taboo to me at the time that I ran straight to the attending teacher and told her that the kid had something illegal in his bag that he showed me. I know pornography isn't illegal, but at the time this is what I believe to be true, likely because of my upbringing. He left the school a little later with the police, but not in cuffs. It was a very, very quiet transaction and none of the other kids saw them leave out through the back hallway. I never saw him or his sisters ever again. Turns out the Polaroids were of his 16 year old cousin, and they were taken by his dad. It was illegal in the end. Yeah no kidding. 10 year old me raised the red flag for the wrong reason. But I guess it was good I did anyway. I was 21 and just moved to a college town living on my own. I noticed my AC unit was being turned off during the day. I thought maybe it was maintenance or a faulty breaker. So I talked to property management. They couldn't figure it out. I brushed it off. Then I started coming home and there was dishes I didn't remember leaving in the sink. A cereal bowl. A fork. I had a brain tumor so I was concerned my memory was getting really bad. Then one day while I was in the shower, I thought I heard a man downstairs. I turned off my shower. Froze and grabbed a razor. I realized the door had no locks so I braced myself against the sink and door. I held my breath and listened. I frantically texted my high school friend who lived in the unit next door. When I heard his voice, I flew downstairs and he was staring at ammunition on my carpet. Just bullets scattered everywhere. And this began the three year saga of my stalker and we made the first of multiple police calls. So while not traditionally creepy, those bullets made my skin crawl and heart sink. I knew someone wanted to hurt me and had been watching me. My mother always told me to close my window blinds as a kid before I went to sleep. I usually remembered but one night I forgot. I woke up in the middle of the night to an old man staring through my window smiling. We stared at each other for like 10 seconds. I calmly got out of bed and walked to my mom's room. On the way there. I passed the living room and saw someone walking past our living room windows. I went to sleep in her bed and never brought it up. As a kid I was always terrified of looking out windows at night for this exact reason. If that, same but it was because I actually saw someone as well. A couple living in the cottage on our property had acquired a stalker. So one night I got up to get a drink from the kitchen, looked up and there he was in our back garden. Noped right on out of there and got my parents to call the police. I'm 20 and I'm still terrified of this. Dude I would have screamed. Pooped my pants and passed out on my poop filled pants. Glad this will never happen to me. I live on the 13th floor. Someone's gotta have a jetpack or mutated giraffe legs to pull that crap on me. It was probably old. Time traveling you from the future. Sadly staring in at your former childhood. Nah. He was white. I'm black. This presents a challenge to my theory but I think I can work around it. Are you by any chance of mine? About 5 years ago a few buddies and I went camping in Tennessee. We were on mountain bikes so we were able to get way far out from civilization and set up camp in the middle of the woods. 
This was not a camping area so we didn't run into any other people, and we were so far away from anything we didn't expect to. We all went to sleep without incident and it was as dark as dark can be outside with clouds blocking the moon. After being asleep for a couple of hours I heard leaves crunching probably about 20 feet from our tent. It was obviously footsteps. I then noticed a little bit of light shining on the tent from what I assume was a flashlight. Then I hear two men whispering. Then I hear, you're asleep in there. My instinct was to remain completely silent and I didn't make a sound. Eventually I heard more footsteps heading away from the tent until eventually I heard nothing again. Needless to say I got absolutely no sleep after that and I woke my buddies up about 10 minutes later to tell them. In the morning there was no sign of anybody, and we left quickly. Never figured it out. Maybe they were moonshiners trying to get to their still, and they were hoping they didn't wake you up on their way through there. It absolutely could. Yes. Good moonshine is made from the water way up in the mountains out in the middle of nowhere. Making moonshine is super illegal. So a lot of bootleggers go up there in the middle of the night to tend to their still sites and make the liquor. The nickname moonshine comes from going to the still site by the light of the moon. If our ropey here was camping somewhere let's say near Sevierville, they could have been camping on a path to a still site. And if it was moonshiner slash bootlegger, he was probably just as scared of the people in the tent as they were of him. Could have thought they were cops or robbers and he noped the f out of there. Haha, <laughs> the moonshiner came across an empty tent in the middle of the mountains. It creeped me out so we bolted. I was about 9 at the time and I was trying to sleep. I didn't have any curtains or any sort of window coverings. I look out my window to see a woman, grinning from ear to ear. She slowly backs away from my window, and I go ballistic and run the f out of my room. Needless to say I slept with my parents for a few weeks afterwards. For months my friend would talk about how she was super uncomfortable around her dad. I would agree and think it was a sort of men can definitely be creepy sometimes kind of thing. Turns out her dad had been sexually assaulting her. Possibly only once. I'm not quite sure. Ever since her mom's parents died. They died within the same year as each other and generally you can't be in the mood at that sort of time. I found out about all of this after my friend killed herself. Her dad is in jail and her mom and two siblings have moved a couple times in the past year since she did it. I miss her every day. My cousin works for a crime scene cleanup thing when I was 17. I needed to be an intern somewhere for a grade. I was expecting to just stay in the office but nope. She got a call that there was a car crash accident and when we got there, there was a dead teen. My age that went through the window. The sad thing is that I knew this kid around the school. Every time I think of him I see his body, lifeless, that was hanging out from that window. Good thing about it is that the school put a memorial for him. My dad and I saw a weird dog human hybrid while we were walking to the train station. I honestly don't know what the hell we saw but we ran. A homeless man walking around holding a dead cat and petting it while mumbling some weird chant. Someone going through a schizophrenic episode and assaulting me. He believed that I worked for the government and that I was only dating him because my boss told me to. He was drunk and became verbally and physically aggressive. It was incredibly disturbing watching someone go from happy-go-lucky to dark and threatening. Saw a guy in the ER with a Rambo knife jammed in the top of his skull. I mean full length serrated and everything. Saw his x-ray too. He was fully conscious as I saw him talking to the ER doc. Apparently it was removed with little to no permanent impairment. When I was 16 my parents got a divorce and I went through the typical angst. Part of it was firmly denouncing religion and anything not explained by science. My mom, sister and I moved into a creepy old house where they both complained of paranormal instances, which I was quick to dismiss. I came home from a track meet around 7.30pm on a Friday. When I came in I heard my sister hysterically laughing with her signature snort. I asked her what's so funny Taylor. And while barely speaking through the laughing and snorting she replied just come up here. It's hilarious. I slowly walk up the creaky steps as I listen to her laugh the entire time. She kept saying you gotta see this. Come up here. When I opened the door it was pitch black and she was nowhere to be found. Then I realized when I drove into the driveway there were no other cars. I was home alone. I then remembered my mom and sister had gone to tour colleges that weekend. I got my ass out of their ASAP. I now believe I know nothing about this world. The creepiest thing I've encountered was over a series of a couple years. 
The previous tenant of the house we lived in was in jail for the rest of his life. He had been found guilty of throwing his two month old child against the wall in a fit of rage because it wouldn't stop crying. Flash forward to when my first younger brother was born. We would hear him crying for hours on end however whenever we went to check on him he was never crying and often asleep. Now everyone knows baby monitors can pick up other frequencies and just wrote it off as interference. This went on for about a month before it suddenly stopped. This continued to happen year in and year out until we noticed a specific pattern. Every January is when this interference would start and it would end about mid-February. The baby that was tragically killed was killed in late January. Now flash forward again to my younger sister. We as a family were starting to outgrow our home as our family was getting bigger. We ended up having to move the rocking chair and all other baby related things into this room leading us to spend more time in there rocking the baby to sleep etc. Once again January came around and we all anticipated the crying of the phantom baby to resonate through the machine. What we didn't anticipate is on occasion you could actually hear it echo throughout the room. Sounding as if you were in cave with a sound just bouncing from wall to wall. It was horrifyingly distinguishable yet could never be heard outside of this room. There was nothing more terrifying to me than being tasked with rocking my sister to sleep. During that specific match, still gives me chills.